That crisp fall feeling in the air is just around the corner. And that inspired me today to create five beautiful farmhouse fall decor items for all of you here on my channel. All right, now let's get crafting. For this project, we're gonna need a double of these three different size pumpkins. Two large, two mediums, two smalls, two terracotta pots, a dowel stick, and some leaves or some Spanish moss. Also, we're gonna use a piece of foam. Start by taking the foam, cutting it down to size, and sticking that into the pots. And now we're gonna shish kebab on those three different size pumpkins. Put them on at the different angles that you like. You could also just do them very vertically straight going down. Once you've done that, I like to pre-punch a hole into the foam, add some glue, and then stake the dowel down into that pot. I took it outside at this point and spray painted them with a primer white spray paint. That way so that anything that's on it doesn't bleed through. And then I'm now gonna be going for a very peachy Cinderella type pumpkin for these mini pumpkin topiaries. Go ahead and paint on the color that you want. I'm going with a lot of peachy creams and orange. And now once all my paint was on and dried, I went ahead and took some ribbon, wrapped it around the top of that terracotta pot to add a high-end look. I cut off the extra, and then once that was done, I came back in with my Spanish moss going in between all of the different pumpkins. At the very top, I added back on the little stem for the pumpkin, and at this point, it just looks so beautiful and so high-end looking. I love having two of them because I can put them on different bookshelves. I also decided to give my Spanish moss a little bit of a trim so it didn't look so wild and crazy. And then also at the end to clean up the ribbon on the backside, I added a half wooden bead to the back. And at this point, it's all done and ready to be displayed. This DIY is so much fun, but I'm gonna recommend, if you're gonna do this project, go get white pipe cleaners as well as white beads. You will spend a lot of time trying to cover up those colors. So what you're gonna need are some of these kid beads. You could do the colored ones. You can pick all of this up from Dollar Tree, but if you wanna spend less time trying to get rid of the color that's on there, this will work even better. Add about 23 beads to 25 beads on each pipe cleaner and you're gonna need eight to 10 pipe cleaners depending on how thick you want your little faux corn to look. On one of the ends, go ahead and twirl all of the ends together to create a little nub. And once you've got those all twisted around nice and tight, you're then gonna hold it at the nub pointing up and star out all of the different pipe cleaners. Then start to push down the pipe cleaners around and over that little nub, pushing all the beads to that end where you just knotted it up, and then at the top start to twist it and start to add more of that pressure in there at that other end to start twisting them down into place to create a second nub. Once you've got that second nub in place, go ahead and open them up, twist it down underneath, and then push around the sides of those other pieces of long bead strands. Now you can see at this point, it's really colorful, which is super fun if you're doing this for a kid's craft, but if you want it to look more farmhouse, you're gonna have to take it outside and you're gonna have to paint it. I spray painted mine at first to see how well the coverage would be, and then I found that the pipe cleaners just weren't covering as well as I would like them to because of the fiber and the fabric. The spray paint just wasn't adhering to it. So I came back in and I'm using some of my chalk paint to do that. So I will again recommend, if you're gonna do this project, get white pipe cleaners and get white beads and you'll save yourself a ton of time and then this project is super easy. If not, 
the painting process will take a little bit longer. So I just want to give you all the truth. I found this cute inspiration on Pinterest a long time ago and I wanted to make sure that you understand and know that if you do this go with the white ones it'll save you a ton of time. At this point I took some of this grass hula skirt and I cut off a piece. I'm folding it in half. I'm twisting the end and I'm going to tie a knot. That's because this is going to become the husk part of the corn. We are going to just tie a knot and we're going to glue that onto the top of the two corns which at this point it looks so cute. Once I brought in some of that dry brush distressing on the corn to bring forth the little nubs from those beads, it just looks like a piece of corn and it's such a cute project. This is super cost efficient. You can make a ton of them for hardly any money. Now I added that corn husk up at the top and now I'm gonna add on a really big bow and it just is so cute for the fall season. If you are enjoying this video, I sure would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. I'm always so grateful. I say it every time, but I really am. Thank you for being here today. We're gonna grab one of these tag signs from the Dollar Tree. They carry these all year long. This one I had on hand from Valentine's Day. Go ahead and remove the bow and the twine that's on it. Once you've got that all off and cleaned up, I put fabric on the back of mine because I just like a clean look. Go ahead and paint the other side white. And then I'm gonna put down some washi tape because I love using washi tape whenever I'm doing painted lines. I feel like I get a nice clean line. I'm gonna come on with some mustard yellow and I actually ended up doing about four coats of it just because it is a little opaque when you're putting it on and it takes a little bit of time to build up that color but this wasn't a hard process because I have a heat gun. So I went ahead and painted that four times, removed that washi tape, and now I'm gonna come in with these wheat picks that I get from the Dollar Tree. They have a whole bunch of different color variations. So I went ahead and grabbed an amber, a greenish tone, and then a wheat light tan color. I'm now gonna take a beaded garland. I cut off a long strand of it, and I'm twisting that into a circle because we're gonna make a wheat wreath. Try to say that three times. That was kind of a mouthful. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and just twist those wheat sticks on, and I'm gonna go all the way around the whole wreath just twisting these on. This is a super easy process to do. You will struggle with the very ends of these pieces of wire, but if you do, just get some pliers and you just twist them down in, and it makes it really easy to do this part. This is super pretty to do, and making this yourself is going to save you a ton of money. I love making little mini wreaths like this for signs, and you'll see in a second how they all come together. And then to tie it all back in and make sure it's nice and secure, I came back in with another strand of beads, and I just wove that around all of the different weed sticks, and it just looks so pretty for fall. Now I'm gonna take this stencil that I have from the Dollar Tree. I really loved the font on this one because I wanna have two different fonts. I love typography. So what I do is I just take my stencil brush, I'm going to tap, tap, tap until I get the color that I desire. I'm using a chestnut brown, and then I always clean my stencils immediately because it just makes for easy cleanup for later, and then you don't have any smudging or bleeding. I always dry each letter in between when I'm doing lettering stencils so I don't have any smudges going on. And then once I've got the word harvest down on the yellow, I think the brown and the mustard yellow together are just so pretty. I'm now going to come in with this Studio R12 stencil. I love this old fashioned farmhouse market stencil. I'm going to use the part at the bottom where it says bread and pies. I thought that was really cute with the word harvest. And I'm just gonna go ahead and tap, 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 bring in that color. And when I lift it up, oh, it's just so pretty. I had so much fun making this project. Now I want it to look like an old farmhouse sign. So I'm gonna do some light distressing with a tan color. I'm gonna come all over the white. 
and a little bit over that mustard yellow. Now at this point we can go ahead and start to add on our wreath, add lots of hot glue to make sure you adhere it on there well. Go ahead and just press that down on there and once it's in place, I'm now going to come in with a beautiful bow for fall. I just doubled up my bows. I've got a hound's tooth orange and white as well as a burlap big ribbon. And then at the very top to clean up that little hole, I'm just going to add a half wood bead. I love throwing in projects that are whimsical here and there on my channel because crafting just wouldn't be crafting without cute, whimsical things. Now I'm gonna remove these stickers on the back and the artwork on the front of this little house. This is my favorite new craft tool. I keep talking about it because I don't think enough people know about this tool. It is a plastic scraper blade. It gets underneath everything and when you buy it, I think it comes with a hundred blades. The thing is my favorite. When you have a heat gun with it, it can pick up anything off of any project with ease. Now you can see that I got all that stuff off. I painted the three different size houses black, and now I'm coming in with orange and white. The orange is an upside down water drop, and the white are oval eyes. So at this point, it's starting to come together, and you can see that we're making crows out of houses once you've got their eyes painted on their nose beak painted on go ahead and sand the sides of it to give it a more farmhouse rustic look i just think these are so silly and so cute my daughter as i was making them she thought they were so cute she at first was wondering what i was making and then she said oh you're making crows <laughs> So go ahead and take some twine, wrap it around the bottom of the house a couple times, tie a knot, a double knot, and then I'm going to just simply add on some gingham black and white bows. I think these are so darling for the fall and they're so easy to make and I just, it made me feel so happy as I was making them. For this project, we're gonna go with a more Kirkland high-end style. We're gonna take one of these 11 by 14 frames, two of these tiles. I painted the tiles both white, and now we're gonna take apart that frame. Go ahead and remove the glass. I made this part a little bit brighter so you all can see that I'm painting it a chestnut brown, that black frame. Once that was dry, I set it to the side and I started working on the backer of the frame. Go ahead and cut down your tiles to fit the size of that backer. And then once you've got them cut to size, go ahead and use some hot glue. When you cut apart the sides of these tiles, the adhesive strip on the back will come off because it's only bound around the sides of that square. But that's perfectly fine because you just add some hot glue and it sticks on there beautifully. Now I'm gonna come in with a very beautiful tan kind of beige color and we're going to bring forth that texture this technique i know is super popular here on youtube but we're going to turn this into something even more elevated than just this beautiful raised tin look so go ahead and add some of that same distressing to your frame and then pop that backing right into the frame and lock it into place once you've got that in place this next part is where it really starts to elevate and it makes me just think of like kirkland home decor things that you would see in their store. Go ahead and use your hot glue to create a nice, thick, round rim of some hot glue. And I had my stuff all laid out ready to go so I could just plop that right into the hot glue where it doesn't start to dry or cool down. Go ahead and just create a beautiful wreath with some leaves. I'm now gonna come in with some fall foliage, some leaves, some beautiful little 
wheat sprigs, and then I'm going to add on this gorgeous white sunflower that they have right now at the Dollar Tree. I added in some smaller ones, some more greenery. Basically keep playing with the foliage until you get it to where you love it. Now at this point we're going to add on a ticking stripe bow that I get from the Dollar Tree and then as well as this wood sign that says blessed. I had so much fun making this. It's so high end and it would look so gorgeous anywhere displayed in your home. All five of these projects were so budget friendly and easy to make. I love projects like this because you get such an impact for such a friendly crafter budget. Whether you try any of them or you just take it as inspiration, I'm so grateful you were all here today and I hope that you enjoyed these ideas. I hope that you find some that you can use in your own craft room and that you even get a chance to be in your craft room or at your kitchen table crafting, or even on a floor in a room that you found in the corner of your home. I am just so grateful for crafting and being able to share this passion with all of you. If you are new or returning and haven't clicked the subscribe button yet, don't forget to click it so you don't miss upcoming videos all throughout this season. Don't forget to head over to my gallery and check out any videos that you might have missed over this last week. There's been some new ones. Also remember, God loves you, you matter, you're important, and that heaven is cheering for you. I'm going to recommend a couple of videos right here at the end. I'm so grateful for all of you. And until the next episode, bye friends.